Film has always been something that's operated in waves. You have the screwball comedies of the 1930s, the westerns of the 50s, and the big action movies of the 1980s. Today, it seems like we do nothing more than make superhero movies and return to old franchises. But I would argue against that. What I'm seeing today is that cinema is more diverse than ever. Yes, all the top-selling movies are either Spider-Man or Star Wars, but there's other movies being made, and they have a market. I believe somewhere in the late 80s or early 90s, films split off into multiple different directions, giving us all the different types of movies we have today, from small art house films to the big action ones. It's hard not to attribute this split in multiple directions of American cinema to another cinema movement happening in the late 80s and early 90s. The Hong Kong New Wave Just like we have now in American cinema, the Hong Kong New Wave has so much variety to offer. From the thrilling action movies of John Woo that give a deep look on the dark underbelly of Hong Kong, to the touching romantic films of Wong Kar Wai, films where each moment is so sweet it's like a bite of the best candy you've ever tasted, but also sad and grounded in a way that snaps you right back to reality. Recently, I've been watching as many Hong Kong New Wave films as I can get my hands on, especially from the two directors I just mentioned, John Woo and Wong Kar Wai. As a Westerner watching these films, they'll feel familiar, like things you've seen before, and there's a reason for that. A lot of the directors in this movement studied in the West and brought back what they learned. They would eventually combine a lot of the Eastern and Western filmmaking techniques giving Hong Kong New Wave films a familiar yet exciting new feel. I believe director Wong Kar Wai said it best, Hong Kong made films to entertain, and they know how to communicate with international audiences. Many have even referred to Hong Kong as the Hollywood of the East because of its prolific output and diverse range of films. But. It wasn't only what the Hong Kong directors learned from the West that helped them make their amazing films. Hong Kong has a rich history of cinema itself. Before the Hong Kong New Wave really started in the late 1970s, the film industry in Hong Kong was propped up by a robust mass production studio system which produced countless world-renowned kung fu action flicks, featuring global stars like Bruce Lee. It's a combination of their history of cinema and a studying of our history of cinema that made them capable of creating these beautifully diverse films. Some examples being In the Mood for Love from Wong Kar Wai, a touching film about two neighbors as they cope with the loss of their significant others when they find that they are cheating with each other. Fallen Angels, also directed by Wong Kar Wai, a sprawling ensemble film about the underworld of Hong Kong seen through the lens of love, crime, and food. Hard Boiled by John Wu, a fast-paced police story with action on a level that John Wick couldn't even touch. And lastly, A Better Tomorrow, a film directed by a younger John Wu. This film explores the hardships that crime puts on a family through the lens of a high-volume action flick. After making these films, John Woo used his success in Hong Kong cinema to propel himself to a successful career in America. Wong Kar Wai stayed in Hong Kong and continued to make films there. But some of the predominant actors from the Hong Kong New Wave followed John Woo's cue and moved to America to star in American films. Some examples being Chow Yun Fat and Tony Leung Chi Wai. You can still see a lot of these actors today in our current films. They're not the only thing from Hong Kong New Wave that survives in American cinema. Things from Hong Kong New Wave like style, plot, framing, all survive on through our modern American films. So next time you're watching a big action movie, ask, who did it first? John Wick or Inspector Tequila Yun?